All right, guys and girls, welcome to the video. This is your host, Mr. Shah, and we are back with tutorial number two. In tutorial number one, I taught you how to get the API key from uh, the Google Developer Console. In tutorial two, we will be walking you through the basic steps to get started with the Google API key. So the first thing that you need to do is download the Google library. So basically, we need to get the API client dot discovery. So you can just do it by pip and install um, or you can google it it's pretty easy we already have that we need the request library also so the first step is importing this libraries right the second step would be getting your key that is your api key and the blog id so the blog id let me uh, so whatever google blog you want to scrape you need to get the blog id well, let me just walk you through the steps how do you get the blog id so you can just go to Google. It's very easy, right? Uh, and simply say, you can simply type how to get Google blog ID and the first thing should help you out, right? So here you can see sign in on the blogger, uh, on the bloggers, I'm sorry, sign in on the blogger and on the left hand side, on click on the down arrow, click on the new blog, enter the name of the blog, and here are the steps how you can get the blogger id basically um let me how to well, let me just show you how to do that or how to get that uh, so if you go to your blog so let's say you want to scrape your own blog for some reason so if you go on the top section of the url here you can see blog id equals to the number so that's the blog id so that's what you want to uh, download so make sure to get that blog id or the blog id once you have the key and blog id step three create a google api resource client so we want to do that so that, that can be done using a simple way so we can i call a variable called as blog and i say build I, I want to use the blogger API version is three developer key is equal to the key. So I'm just going to run this beautiful. Now, if I just run a type on this, it should be a Google uh, resource client. So, so if I just run this and see here, you can see Google API client discovery resource. So it's a resource object. Now, what are the methods and attributes you can use? So you can query on this blog object using three stuff. So you can do dot blogs dot get by URLs or list by user. What I mean by that, let me show you one by one in action. So for more details, you can go to this website. That is the documentation. The links to the Jupyter notebook is in the description. So here you can see, you can say blogs, blogs has these many attributes. So get, get by URL and list by URL. So here you can see, you can do by blog ID, by URL or by blogs. You can also go through the comment section if you want. You can go through the pages. You can go through the post section. You can go to the user, user, uh, blog user info, page views, post user interface and much more let us dive into it one by one in detail so let us first see the blogs thing how do we get so we need in the blog we have three methods that is the get the get method takes the blog id so what we will do is we created an object known as blog right so we say blog dot blogs so here you can see we have blogs right once you're done with that we can say dot get method so this since this has a get method it takes blog id you can supply the blog id and just say execute and if you print it you have a nice nice json response about your blog so here you can see the name of the blog is pythonist i can also take it out so it's a dictionary so i can simply give the name of the dictionary right so name so here you can see I, I was able to grab the name successfully. Let me just print the response once again. So a better way if you're a programmer, don't do the key method. Uh, usually whenever you want to access a dictionary, you would say dot get method. Remember, this is what uh, usually the programmers do. So here you can see even this works correctly. Now you would say, hey, what's the difference, Samil? You know, it's, they work bo both the same. No, guys, there is a difference. The difference is this. Let me show you by doing that. So what I'm trying to say. So if I say instead of this, if I want to, if I access the dictionary like this, so what is the problem you want to see, right? So I'm going to show you the problem. So if you say name and for some reason, let me just print it. So you get it right. But if you say something else, 
you get an error the, the program terminates abruptly so so this is the issue we don't want to do that so let's see what happens here so if i just type any random characters so here you can see i'm not getting any errors so i can simply return a none object oops sorry uh, i guess it was a dot comma so now when i run this so it will return none because the response of the dictionary does not exist right so this is why i usually suggest you to get the use the get method here you can see none right so now let me change that to name so i can get the name back so this is a small python tip for you guys right so we want to make sure that you implement this so this is tutorial number 2 um we we went through the blog stuff in the tutorial number 3 we would be exploring the youtube uh, sorry the blogger post with this uh, google cloud api so let's get started uh, i will end the video right here want to keep all the video small and sweet so tutorial number 3 we would be discussing the post uh, method in detail so that's it for this video uh, so guys and girls if you have any doubts or questions please make sure to put them in the comment section would be very happy to assist you with all your questions and as usual thank you for watching thank you for love support and see you guys next time